Hello, I'm Betty, a math educator from South Carolina. I'm here with Judy, a math educator from Colorado. We're going to explore exponential functions. Exponential functions have the form f of x equals a multiplied by b to the x power. For our explorations, we're going to use the transformation graphing app on the TI-84. If you press the apps key, as Judy has just done, an arrow up or down, you can select transform. This is the transformation graphing app. On the home screen of the calculator, it doesn't look as if anything has changed, but when you go to the y equals screen, you will see it looks different than it would have before. Judy's going to enter y1 equals a multiplied by 2 to the x power. So in this particular exponential function, the base is equal to 2. We're going to look at changes in the value of a. So f of x equals a times 2 to the x. Judy's going to press 1 followed by enter to change the value of a to 1. Let's consider several questions about this. Currently, as you may recall from previous videos, if the value of a is 1, the graph on the left currently is y equals 1 times 2 to the x, or just y equals 2 to the x. The domain is all real numbers. The range is y is greater than 0. As Judy changes the value of a and specifically increases these values, think about what happens to the graph. And does the domain change? Does the range change? So she's going to start back at 1, increase the values of A, and think about the changes in the graph and the two questions below that. You likely noticed that as A increased, the graph appeared to get steeper as you looked at it from left to right, and the y-intercept is changing. You may have noticed that when x was equal to 1, the y-intercept was at 0, 1. Now when a is 4, if you count the tick marks, the y-intercept is at 0, 4. These tick marks are located at intervals of 1. So we have a 0, 4 as our y-intercept for the current graph. The domain is still all real numbers. The range is y is greater than 0. Now, Let's think about another question related to this graph. What happens to the graph of f of x equals a times 2 to the x power if the value of a is negative? Judy's going to enter negative 1 for the a value. Notice how that graph is shaped. Think about domain and range. She's going to decrease the values of a further. So think about if a is a negative number, what happens to the graph? And compared to the original function, which was y equals 1 times 2 to the x power, do we have changes in domain and range? So we were comparing the negative values of a to this graph originally shown. Please pause the video, write down your answers, and then return to the video. When a is negative, our graph is very different. As x is increased, the y values decrease, as you see. And also, we see that the y-intercept changes. Currently, at the a value of negative 4, it appears that the y-intercept is 0, negative 4. You may conjecture that the y-intercept y value is the a value, with x equal to 0 at the y-intercept, of course. The domain is still all real numbers, but now our range is y is less than 0. Let's do one more comparison on this page. Judy's going to change the a value to positive 3. So she'll press 3, enter. Observe that graph for just a moment. Now she's going to change a to negative 3. How do these graphs compare? The second graph was a reflection across the x-axis of the first graph. Now, let's look at two questions related to these functions. 
So the function f of x equals a multiplied by 2 to the x power. We want to think about the value of f of 0. And also, we'd like to describe the graph if a were equal to 0. As Judy is recording, f of 0 is the same as a multiplied by 2 to the 0 power. And therefore, f of 0 is the same as a multiplied by 1, since 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. So at f of 0, at an x value of 0, we have a function value of a. So the a value in this example, of course, is the y-intercept. The y value of the y-intercept, the y-intercept is 0, a. Now think about what happens if a is equal to 0. This would be f of x equals, and Judy's going to record this for us as well, f of x equals 0 multiplied by 2 to the x power. When we multiply by 0, our result is 0. So this gives us a function f of x equals to 0. This is a constant function. And Judy's going to change a to 0 on the left-hand side to show us this. And obviously, this is not an exponential function. It's a line, constant function. We say f of x equals to 0, or y is equal to 0, is this equation. So a cannot be equal to 0 for our exponential function f of x equals a times b to the x. You've explored some of these concepts before. We just wanted a quick review of them. Now, let's consider another function. Judy is going to go back to y equal, and this time our base is going to be 1 half. She's going to use the decimal 5 tenths, so we have the equation a multiplied by 5 tenths to the x power, which of course is the same thing as f of x equals 1 half to the x power. We're going to consider the similar questions about this graph. What happens to this graph if we increase the value of a? And we'd like you, in comparison to the graph you see right now, think about those changes and also any changes in the domain and range. So currently, we are changing the value of a so that it increases. As Judy is using the right arrow key. Let's go back to a is equal to 1, which of course was the function f of x equals 1 half to the x. And as we increase the value of a, again, watch for any changes. Please pause the video, record your answers to the questions, and then return to the video. Hopefully you noted that the graph did get steeper. The y-intercept changed. Again, as we noted before, the y-intercept is at 0, comma, a. The y value of the y-intercept is the a value. And the domain is still all real numbers. The range did not change. It's y greater than 0. Now let's consider this graph when the a value is negative. So we're going to take the function f of x equals a multiplied by one half to the x power, but again, consider when a is negative. Judy has a negative one value for a now. She's going to show other negative values. Think about what's happening to the graph. Think about the domain and range compared to the original graph. Judy's going to change a to one, so we can think about the original graph, which was f of x equals one times one half to the x power. So now if A is negative, think about any changes that you see in the graph. Hopefully you noted that the A value change certainly did change the value of the y-intercept. If Judy decreases the value of A, you will see that y-intercept value change. The domain is still all real numbers. But the range, when a is negative, with the space of one half, of course, the range is y less than zero. Let's compare this again to an a value that's positive and an a value that's negative. 
Judy is going to type 3 for the value of a. She types 3, enter. We have the function f of x equals 3 multiplied by 1 half to the x power. Now she's going to change that value to negative 3. Once again, just for review, we have a reflection across the x-axis as we move from the a value of 3 to the a value of negative 3. To look at changes in both a and b, we can go back to y equal and change our function. So the a will remain with us, but the base this time will be represented by the letter b. So we have the exponential function y is equal to a times b to the x power. When Judy presses graph, the current values of a and b are shown. She's going to change a to 1. And let's change B to perhaps 2. Keeping B at a value of 2, let's change the values of A again, as we did earlier today. So this time we can review what we looked at earlier. The changes in A, if we leave B constant for a few moments. We could look at negative values of A, positive values of A, but A cannot be equal to zero. Now, Judy's going to leave the value of A at five, for example, and she's going to change the value of B, but with certain restrictions. As you recall from the exponential function definition that you may have studied in another video or in your classroom, the B value cannot be equal to one, and B is positive. So if she starts with a B value of 3, she can increase that value. Or she can type a decimal value, perhaps 0.5 for the value. So as long as the base is positive but not equal to 1. And now if she uses the right arrow key, the values will increase by increments of 1. But again, this can be changed in the settings. Let's consider a question related to values of A and B. The graph on your right is a snippet taken from a graph done on a calculator. An exponential function is graphed. We'd like you to write a possible equation for this function in the form f of x equals a times b to the x. Please pause the video write your equation for this function, and then return to the video. From what we explored earlier, hopefully you noted that the ordered pair 0, 2 tells us the value of a. If x is equal to 0, we would have b to the 0 is equal to 1, so the y value would be equal to a. This is our y-intercept. So the function starts out f of x equals 2, our value of a, and then that's going to be multiplied by a base. If we think about the fact that the function increases as you move from left to right, the base value should be greater than 1. We try a base value, for example, 3, and see if that makes sense in the context of this graph. For example, if x is equal to 1, you could quickly mentally say 3 to the first is 3, multiply by 2, and you would get a y value of 6. And then you could look at the graph and see if this makes sense. Obviously, you do not have a second point here, which could be used to determine an exact value, perhaps. But you can make a conjecture about the value of b and be very comfortable with your value of a. Here's the challenge for you. An exponential function is graphed below. We'd like you to write a possible equation for the function in the form f of x equals a times b to the x. For other videos, please go to the TI Education YouTube channel.